Hello, let's work through solutions to the problems assigned out of section 6.4. First up, determine the amplitude and period of the following function. So whenever we have a function given by a sine or cosine of omega times x, the amplitude is the absolute value of the number multiplied out in front and the period is given by 2 pi over this omega. So in this particular problem, the amplitude is the absolute value of negative 7, or 7, and the period, I should uh, be specific here, it's 2 pi over the absolute value of omega. There are, we'll see later on, by convention, omega is never going to be negative anyway, but since that hasn't immediately been declared, we do need an absolute value down there in our definition of the period, in our computation, I'm sorry, of the period. So 2 pi over the absolute value of 9 is just 2 pi over 9. There's not really any simplification to be done there. Okay, so let's do this one. So we need the amplitude and the period. Well, <clears throat> very similar. Amplitude. It's the absolute value of 8, aka 8, period, 2 pi over the absolute value of pi, which is just pi. The pi's cancel, this is just 2. There's a lot going on in this problem. We have 10 different functions, okay, <clears throat> and we have 10 different pictures and we need to match them up. What we're going to do is we're going to determine the amplitude and the period of all of these graphs, then we're going to determine the amplitude and period of all of these functions. That's not going to be quite enough information to solve everything, but it is going to be a lot of the way there. So this is how we're going to start off, just by finding amplitude and period for each of these things. Now, what's the definition of amplitude? It's not the highest the graph gets. This is a common misunderstanding. Amplitude is not the highest it gets. Amplitude is how much does it move away from its middle? Now, as it happens, for now, all of our graphs have a middle height of zero. But you can imagine if I have this function and I just shift it up, now the middle is not at zero but the amplitude, which is how far it moves away from the middle, hasn't changed. Even though I've moved the graph up, meaning I've changed the maximum height it gets, I didn't actually change the amplitude. So amplitude is how far does the graph move away from its middle value. For now, the middle is always zero, meaning the amplitude is how high it gets or how low it gets. But as soon as the middle value isn't zero, that's not gonna be the case anymore. Okay, but this amplitude is six, 6, 6, 6, 6, okay, 6, 6, aha, 3, 3, and 3. Now the period of a graph is how long it takes to complete one full, like, picture. So, erasing some of these extraneous marks that we don't need anymore. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace out one full picture and then ask how much X value did I have to run through to do that? So notice here, we're starting at the top and now I've completed the picture. I got back to the top and that had a, an X length of four pi. Here I'm not starting at the top, but I'm starting at the middle going up and I don't finish the picture until four pi. I, here I'm at the bottom and I get back to the bottom at four pi. Here I'm at the middle going down and I repeat that when I'm at four pi. Top to top is an X length of four. Middle going up to middle going up is an X length of four. Bottom to bottom, X length of four. This one's a little tough to read, but bottom to bottom appears to be pi over four. Top to top looks like pi over three, that's why that's labeled there. Middle to middle, I think it's another pi over three. The graph isn't terribly well drawn. But now we've determined the amplitude and period of all of the graphs that were drawn. So we're going to look through the functions that we were given 
and try to determine what their amplitude in period is. Now observe, that's not going to be enough information completely. I mean, the first four graphs all have the same amplitude and period, but they're not the same graph. Okay, so let's look at y equals negative 6 cosine of 1 half x. So the amplitude is the absolute value of negative 6, or 6. The period is 2 pi over the number multiplying x, which is a half, for a result of 4 pi. This tells me it could be any of these four. These are the four graphs that had an amplitude of 6 and a period of 4 pi. Uh, this fifth one, the amplitude is not correct. It's 4 instead of 4 pi. Similarly here, my, uh, sorry, my period is 4 instead of 4 pi. Similarly here, the period and the period is wrong here. Uh, and the lastly, both the amplitude and the period is all wrong. Okay, so the one bit of information beyond amplitude and period that we need to account for are general shapes. Starting from the origin, a sine curve will do this. A cosine curve begins at its maximum and goes to its maximum. The negatives of them just reverse. So now, in addition to the amplitude and period, we can just determine what has the correct shape. So our first picture, amplitude was 6, period was 4 pi, but it is a negative cosine. So I'm looking for something from its minimum to its minimum. When I leave the origin, I should be leaving from a minimum, and that's right here. From a minimum to a minimum. So this right here is negative 6 cosine of 1 half x. The amplitude is right, the period is right, and the general shape of a negative cosine curve is right. And when I say the shape, notice if you're just looking at the graphs, you'd be like, well, they're all wavy. I'm specifically referring to what happens when you leave the or, uh, x equals 0. When x equals 0, we are at a minimum on a negative cosine. On a positive cosine, x equals 0 would be at a maximum. On a sine curve, x equals 0 is at 0, and it starts going up. On a negative sine curve, when x equals 0, the sine is 0, and it starts going down. That's what I'm looking at. OK, so this also has an amplitude of 6 and a period of 4 pi. But I'm looking for a positive sine shape. So I want to leave the origin going up. So this doesn't leave the origin. This leaves the origin and it's going up. This one didn't leave the origin. This one leaves the origin, but it's going down. And these were all the ones with the correct amplitude and period, which means it's gotta be that second one. It's the only one that fits. Okay, this, last, this third one, also has an amplitude of 6 and a period of 4 pi, but it's a cosine curve, so it should, uh, when x is 0, I want to be at my maximum, and that's this first one. Okay, this one has an amplitude of 3, and it has a period of 2 pi over 6, which is to say pi over 3. So I'm looking for an amplitude of 3, and a period of pi over 3. That could be one of these two. Amplitude of 3, period of pi over 3. But I want a negative cosine, so when x equals 0, I want to be at my minimum. In this picture, at x equals 0, we're at the maximum. This picture, x equals 0, we are at 0, in fact. So, the best I can offer is that this picture here is probably just not drawn quite well enough. This minimum, I thought it corresponded to pi over 4, but maybe pi over 4 is a little bit to the left, so pi over 3 is the actual minimum here. So maybe this was pi over 3, in which case this would be negative 3 cosine of 6x. It's got the correct period, it's got the correct amplitude, it starts at its minimum like a negative cosine should, and it's the only thing 
that has the correct amplitude and has the correct shape of a negative cosine curve, I think I just read this point wrong. I think this pi over four isn't exactly here, it's slightly to the left. So I'm gonna chalk this up to kind of a bad picture that was given. All right, here we've got an amplitude of six and a period of two pi over pi over two, which is four, which means we could be this or this or this. But I'm looking for a negative cosine. This starts at a maximum, that's a cosine. This starts at a zero and moves up, that's a sine. This starts at a minimum, that's a negative cosine. So here we are, negative six cosine pi over two times x. This is very similar, it's got the same amplitude and period, but it's the positive cosine shape, which is here, starting at its maximum. Same amplitude and period, but a positive sine function, that was this one right here. Amplitude of three, period of pi over three, two pi over six is pi over three, but a cosine, so I'm looking for something that starts at its maximum, that's gotta be this guy right here. Amplitude of six, period of four pi, but a negative sine shape, so starting at zero headed down, that's this one here. And finally, amplitude of three, period of two pi over six, AKA pi over three, and a positive sine shape, so leaving from zero headed up, that's this one right here. Yeah, none of these, uh, as written, had a period of pi over four, so this picture I must have just misread. Okay, moving on. I want the amplitude to be six. So I'm looking for something, by the way, that's a sine function. So it's gonna look something like this. I want the absolute value of a to be six, and I want two pi over omega to be the period to be four pi. So I want two pi over omega to be four pi. Specifically, I want two pi to equal four pi times omega, divide by four pi. Pi's cancel, one half equals omega. What is a number that I can pick for capital A so that its absolute value will be six? The easiest thing is six, although negative six would not be wrong, but let's just go with six times the sine of one half x. Negative six is also fine out in front. Uh, you don't really wanna put a negative sign on the inside. It's not exactly incorrect, but it's highly non-standard, if that makes sense. It'll look weird to other people looking at it. Doesn't mean it's wrong, just avoid confusion if you can. We tend to not put negative things in here. Okay. Well, we want a sine function. So that's gonna be something times the sine of omega x. We want the amplitude to be the absolute value of a, that should be five. The period, namely two pi over omega should equal four. So let's just use a equal five. 2 pi equals 4 omega, divide both sides by 4. Omega equals pi over 2. So y is equal to 5 times the sine of pi over 2x. And lastly, can we find an equation of the graph shown? So we, what we want to do is we want to identify three features, amplitude, period, and what I was referring earlier as shape. Okay, so the middle height is zero. How far does it deflect away from its middle? Well, this goes to a height of two and this goes down to a height of minus two. So the amplitude is two. Okay, so I'm looking at y is equal to a sine or cosine of omega x. The absolute value of a is two. That means a is plus or minus two. We're not free to pick it however we want because we do have a specific graph we're trying to match. So right now it's either two or it's minus two and we're not quite sure which. Next, let's use the period. That's how long it takes to repeat itself. So if I start from the uh, x equals zero, I'm going up. I don't finish the shape until I get here corresponding to three. So the period is three. 
So 2 pi over omega is 3. Sorry, that's a very bad looking omega. Let me rewrite that. Cross multiply, divide by 3. Okay. Finally, let's look at the shape. Starting from x equals 0, I'm at the middle. That tells me I'm a sine function. A cosine function will either be at its maximum or at its minimum, depending on whether it's a positive cosine or a negative cosine. We are at the middle, so I can either be at the middle going up or I can be at the middle going down. Middle going up is sine, middle going down is negative sine. So we are this one. Specifically, it's a positive number times sine. So this tells me it is a sine shape and A is positive. So now we can combine all of our information, okay? Specifically, A was plus or minus two, but A has to be positive, so A is two. Sine or cosine, it's a sine. Omega x, omega is two pi over three. And there we have it.